Throughout history, humanity has sought answers in Scripture, finding parallels between prophecies and world events. The outbreak of COVID-19, a global pestilence affecting every nation, prompts many to wonder, did the year 2019 mark the beginning of sorrows, a prophetic period spoken about by Jesus Christ that immediately precedes the Great Tribulation? Recent tremors of the earth seem to resonate with these prophecies, like the devastating earthquake in Morocco, claiming over 2,000 lives, and the world's climate, unpredictable, torrential rains, striking where they are least expected, from California's parched lands. To the Burning Man Festival, a place celebrated for its desert environment. Rumblings and instability of the supervolcano in Yellowstone Park are increasing slowly with intensities that is very foreboding. The hurricanes in the Caribbean have increased in their intensity this year, with Hurricane Lee showed winds in excess of 200 nonsers de Mepi. Political instability across the world is aligning in a way very hostile to America. Our treasonous President Biden recently said that his goal is to increase the success and prosperity of China, the very country that wants to destroy us. Within the minds of men, there is increasing turbulence among those who will do anything to grab political power and domination over God's sacred children. Those politicians who are satanic henchmen are more active than ever trying to bring about domination through the use of our legal system now referred to as lawfare. The indictments against former President Trump are proof of that. There are no bounds when so-called lawyers go back into the 1840s to dredge up what they will call legal out-of-bounds precedents and apply them in ways that were never intended and are nothing more than persecution against potential political rivals, which we see happening against Donald Trump and his presidential bid. The hatred within our liberal hive-minded political system seems to be growing by the minute. Gone are the days when two people can have different opinions and still respect one another's right to say what the feel. Gone are the days when, for example, Democrat Everett Dirksen in the late 1950s sat down with Dwight Eisenhower, the Republican president, and came to compromise agreements that benefited the people of the United States. Their love of our country superseded their different priorities. Now our political system has disintegrated into not only to win the elections, but to crush your opponent into oblivion, never to be heard from again, and if possible, throw them in jail for the rest of their life for disagreeing with you. This is becoming a hallmark of the leftists among us. This is a pure demonstration of Satan in action. Seems like these kinds of things always emanate from the liberal left, doesn't it? Remember, my dear sacred children of God, there is indeed a commonality between Satan and the leftists within our political spectrum that cry out for power and dominion over everybody at any cost. The book of Revelation and the Gospels caution us about such times, signaling the imminent coming of the Messiah. Is now the time for their return of our Lord and Savior? I think not yet, but we are getting ever so close. His return will be earmarked by satanic domination, where people will feel there is nothing but doom now and forever. I have asked our Lord and Savior when he is coming. Remember, dear sacred children of God, only our loving Father in heaven knows the answer to this question. Yet we do know it seems as if it is rushing toward us at a faster and faster pace. Even in today's ghastly dishonesty of politicians in high places, like the avalanche of secrets by those in high government, will be just a prelude to the suffering yet to come. Government turned upside down, where lies become the language of government, and truth is hunted down like a rabid dog, as we have right now in our country, is the introduction to the end times. In many ways, Satan is just getting started with his malevolence and hatred toward God's sacred children in this country and the world. We have yet to turn toward our loving Father in heaven. 
we have yet to look toward our loving Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We as a people are still too haughty, self-righteous, and imbued with satanic ideas that we think are the way. And for us, it is still okay that we do not care what the destination is as long as we can reap our personal sanctifications and power over all those others around us. But remember, Satan is not content with only attacking God's sacred children through their minds and emotions and temptations of wealth and grandeur. He is also working through those people that believe in UFOs. As a former NASA scientist, I had discussed UFOs in another video, but here is an additional point not covered therein. The subject has been investigated by none other than Dr. Hugh Ross of Reason.org. One point he clearly makes is that of us sacred children. Some have become so susceptible that they willingly put themselves into a trance so that the alien beings can control what is being entered into their computer. It is called automatic writing. There is a written book called Urantia Book that is between 2,000 to 4,000 pages long, depending upon the version you get. Fully one-third of it is attacking the royalty and deity of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is a dead giveaway regarding the source of UFO encounters. As I stated in the previous video, it is none other than Satan himself who is using fallen angels, also known as demons, to terrorize and damage as much as possible God's sacred children while they are on earth. I highly recommend the website mentioned above, reasons.org. So many people do not care how many people make it through the heavenly gates into paradise, for they are making their own paradise as is allowed and encouraged by Satan and his minions in the political realm that so many happily voted for. We think we are so smart when we vote for political criminals that promise to give us what we want from the toils, labors, and works of other sacred children of God. The enormous dishonesty of that is precisely what the liberals among us offer. That is nothing more than eternity in hell, which will in turn lead us to our complete dissolution in being dissolved back into nothingness from where we came. It is an attitude of living in the here and now that counts and nothing else matters because we are having a good time while we destroy all that is good for the benefit of our own giggling, rabid destiny. One way to measure how close we are is by how much liberal, communist, and dominating government powers we will have over us. It is so often only when we have lost our hope and other painful realities on this earth that we will look to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, as our Savior again. Are these mere coincidences or divine signals urging us to be prepared? The call to seek guidance from the divine has never been clear. Unless our country rediscovers the eternal truth of all things visible and invisible, we will sentence ourselves as we currently are into the dustbin of history and the trail of our existence will be made up of the tattered remains of broken bones, crushed dreams, and sinful skeletons on our path to hell. Change now, dear people. Change now, dear sacred children of Almighty God, and stop listening to the one who wants to destroy every one of us. If you do not, you will hear the most wretched and awful sentence uh, ever utter it in all of God's existential creation when you are in front of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to account for your life. Most people will hear the following, Leave me now, for I never knew you. It is at that point you will be escorted by powerful angels through the gates of Hades, never to return, and ultimately be disintegrated back into nothingness from whence you came. To avoid that, pray this now and mean it. Lord Jesus, I know you came to earth and died for my sins. Come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior.